beginning of time. Many men have sought the unknown, delving into dark regions where lie those truths which are destined to destroy. Of all these eerie adventurers into darkness, none was more driven by insatiable curiosity, nor went further into the unknown than the unforgettable Baron Frankenstein. So infamous were his exploits that his name stands forever as a symbol of all that is shocking, unspeakable, forbidden. Thus, in our day, any story which chills the soul and freezes the blood is truly a tale of Frankenstein. Now join us in the mystery, the excitement, and the stimulation that comes when we tell a story so weird, so dark, so harrowing, that it deserves to be called one of the many tales of Frankenstein. I would get soaked to my skin. Hurry up. Can't we wait a few minutes? Hurry up. Why do we have to leave here every night? Can't we sleep in? Orders. But why? 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 The, the Baron doesn't want any servants sleeping in. Her brain came from the skull of a murderer. And you still wanted to kill. But with the right brain. The brain of an intelligent man. A good man. Where do I find it?
would like a room for tonight. Yes, madam. This way, please. The room will be ready in a few minutes. Some hot grog for the gentleman. It was a long trip. It's going to be worth it. I'm sure of it. I hope he can help me. He will. You must believe that. I want to, but I can't hold out much longer. I'm tired, Christina. Sometimes I wish I'd go to sleep and never wake up. Don't talk that way. You are not going to die. You will be helped by Baron Frankenstein. to see the Baron. I am Baron Frankenstein. Oh, well, my name is Halpert, Paul Halpert. This is my wife, Christina. Oh, please. Thank you. I hope you'll forgive us for intruding on you at such a late hour. Oh. Paul. Well, allow me. Right over there, please. appears to be quite ill. What brings him out on a night like this? A matter of life and death. Of life and death? Yes, you were right, Baron. My husband is ill, critically ill. We've come here to ask your help. I don't understand. I, I'm not a physician. We know that. We've heard about your work. I, I still don't understand. We've heard you can create life. If that is true, you must also be able to prevent people from dying. I'm afraid facts have a peculiar way of becoming distorted, Mrs. Halbert. Well, it is true, I uh, was once involved in certain experiments with animals, uh, research on prolonging the span of life. Uh, but as for humans, uh, uh, that kind of experimentation is against the law. We're not here to spy. If you're concerned about ethics... There's really nothing to be ethical about. Well, it's then, if it's a matter of money, here, you have my jewels, everything we possess. You are placing an exaggerated value on my lack of knowledge. Baron, please. I have this. You have good hands. Are you an artist? A sculptor. You will help him. I wish I could. But I'm afraid I cannot work miracles. I suggest you take your husband back to the village, Mrs. Halbert. Any physician can do more than I can. You're telling us to leave.
patience. Three more days. And if you live again. Three days. Sorry. That's all I can do. He can't die. Doctor, you're a man of influence. He will listen to you. Who will listen to me? Baron Frankenstein. Frankenstein? He could keep Paul alive. Believe me, if I were not sympathetic with your despair, madam, Surely I... Surely you've heard of Frankenstein's experiments. The stories I have heard, I have chosen to disregard. For your own good, I would suggest you do the same. You have just finished telling me there's no hope. I was just trying to be realistic, Mrs. Halpert. Believe me, I understand your desperation. Is it a violation of a doctor's ethics to admit it's possible? Someone has found the secret of life and death. If such a secret existed, the medical profession would know it. Does the medical profession know everything? Does it, Doctor? Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection unto eternal life. Amen. Mrs. Halpert, somehow I feel guilty. That's very charitable of you, Baron. Unfortunately, your sense of guilt will not bring my husband back. Come back before sunrise and finish the job. I must close the grave. Leave it open until sunrise. I'm taking a chance if they find out. Would you have my luggage brought down, please? I'll be leaving in about an hour. Yes, madam. Could I have some of those flowers? Of course. Take them all. Thank you.
I'm sorry. Your journey ended so unhappily. Thank you. You've been very kind. I've had your luggage put in the carriage. I will have it brought around whenever you are ready. I'll be ready as soon as I've seen the police. Is something wrong, madam? Yes. And if you'd be good enough to tell me where I can contact... Another sign. No, two more signs. Quickly. That man over there. I saw him at the funeral. Isn't he the caretaker? Something of the sort. He earns his living by preparing and tending the graves. I hope you will forgive my disturbing you. But there is a question I'd like answered. Why wasn't my husband's grave properly closed? Oh, Halpert, I believe you were at the funeral. Halpert? Oh, 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 of course, certainly. Why wasn't the grave closed? Would you believe it, madame? I was on my way to do just that. Well, I'm afraid you're a few hours late. The grave has already been violated. Why? Oh, no, that is impossible. No, it must be your imagination. I don't believe the police will think it is my imagination. Nor do I think they will take a light view of your leaving a grave unsealed all this time. I'm sure they have laws about that. P please, madame. It was not my fault. I had instructions. What do you mean, instructions? From whom? The name does not matter. It matters to me. I'm sure it will matter to the police. Oh, please, I beg you, madame. It is the only work I know. The name of the person. Baron Frankenstein. Baron Frankenstein instructed you not to seal the grave? It's the truth. This is a drunken lie. I swear to you. I was paid well to say nothing. If you go to the police... Under the circumstances, that is the last place I'd want to go. What are you doing here? At the funeral. When you told me you had a sense of guilt, I didn't believe you. I know now I was wrong. I'm afraid I do not understand. Keeping up this pretense is useless. I saw the gravekeeper at the inn. He told me everything. What are you talking about? He told me you were the one who paid him to leave the grave unsealed. But do you believe the rantings of a, of a drunken sot? I might not have. Except for this. This is the locket. It was buried with my husband. I found it outside the grave. How did it get there? Unless you changed your mind. Mrs. Halbert, take my advice. Go back to your family. Stop looking for miracles. Oh, no. Let me see. He's him. dead. He's buried. You saw it with your own eyes. Now, will you please leave? What have you done with him? Who's up there? Your name is Halbert. If you remember and understand, lift your hands. You can think. You can remember. Your brain is alive again, Halbert. It has intelligence. You wanted life, and I have given it to you. Yours was the brain that I needed. And it's the brain that makes it all work. Now listen. Do what I tell you. Sit <gasps> down.
Shoot! Stop! Don't come any closer. him alone. Listen to me. He's not to blame. He did what we asked him to do. We had no right to ask him to commit a crime against God. The life you had was brief, but it was decent and good. Now, don't destroy everything now because of a hideous face and grotesque body that aren't yours. Please. Robbing graves, Baron, is a serious offense. I will have to place you under arrest. You have your job to do. And so have I. And I don't think either of us would let anything stand in the way of fulfilling our respective destinies. Time is of small matter. You see, there's always tomorrow. 